This video is meant to demonstrate the use of the perpetual inventory method along with the LIFO inventory method. As you can see from up here, the letters in LIFO stand for last in, first out. With LIFO, we're going to assume that the newest items are sold first. So you see over here on the right hand side, I have some tokens representing inventory. The green token represents five units of inventory that cost $10 each. The pink tokens represent five units of inventory that cost $12 each. The blue, five units of inventory that cost $13 each. And the yellow, five units of inventory that cost $14 each. We will now deal with the inventory transactions one by one. So we start off with a beginning inventory of 20 units that cost $10 each for a total cost of $200. So you can see here in our inventory storage area, we have 5, 10, 15, 20 units of inventory, colored green, that cost $10 each. The next thing that happens is we purchase 30 units at $12 each, for a total of $360. So, once we pay our $360 to the vendor, we add 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 units to our inventory. So we now have 20 units of the green inventory that cost $10 each and 30 units of the pink inventory costing $12 each. The third thing that happens is we make a sale of 15 units. So a customer comes in and we need to physically give those customers over, excuse me, those units to the customer. So we go to our instructions our instructions are to sell the newest items first. So what we want to do, because these inventory items are arranged oldest to newest, the pink items are our newest items, and we would want to physically hand over 15 of those pink units to our customer. So notice when we hand them over to the customer, we no longer have them in inventory, so we only have 15 units that cost $12 each remaining in our inventory and the original 20 units that cost $10 each. We can visually sell, excuse me, we can visually see on the right hand side that the cost of sale number one is 15 units that cost $12 each. So doing the calculation, 15 units that cost $12 each give us a cost of the sale of $180. The next thing that happens is we purchase 25 units at $13 each. Those are the blue units. And once again, a purchase just means we add to our inventory. So we're going to add 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 of the blue units to our inventory. And now we have three layers in our inventory. We have 20 units that cost $10 each, 15 units that cost $12 each, and 25 units that cost $13 each. The next thing that happens, somebody comes into our store and wants 20 of our units. We need to hand over 20 units to the customer it is our job at the, as the inventory manager to decide which units. According to our instructions, we're to sell the newest items first. We sell the blue ones before the pink and then the pink ones before the green. We have enough blue units to satisfy the sale, so we drag over 5, 10, 15, 20, of our newest units. If we didn't have enough of the blue units, then we move on to the pink units. So we can see over here that the cost of sale number two, 20 units that cost $13 each. 20 multiplied by 13 
gives us a cost of the sale of $260. The final thing that happens is we purchase 30 units at $14 each. Those are our yellow units. And we put them into our inventory storage area. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So you can see here that at the end of the month, based on our perpetual inventory records, by keeping track of each sale, we can see that our ending inventory consists of 20 units that cost $10 each, 15 units that cost $12 each. There are only 5 units of the $13 units remaining. And we have our final purchase, 30 units at 14. We now have enough information to do the basic inventory equation because we know our beginning inventory, we know the cost of all of our purchases, and we know the cost of all of our sales. So, working through the basic inventory equation, beginning inventory, and purchases, Subtract cost of goods sold equals ending inventory. So we start off with our beginning inventory of two hundred dollars right over there in our inventory chart. We had three purchases, the first one for $360, second one for $325, and the third purchase for $420, giving us total purchases of $1,105. We had two sales. The cost of the first sale was $180. The cost of the second sale, $260. So we add the two sales together to calculate total cost of goods sold, and then we subtract that from beginning inventory and purchases to calculate our ending inventory. Because we use the basic inventory equation, we can now do a check of our ending inventory. Units, unit cost, and total based on what we can see in the inventory storage area, we should still have 20 units that cost $10 each. We should have 15 units that cost $12 each, 5 units that cost $13 each, and 30 units that cost $14 each. Doing these multiplications, Calculate the total cost of each layer, add them all up together, and of course it reconciles to the same $865 that we calculated using the basic inventory equation. Our final job is to calculate gross profit. To calculate gross profit, we take our sales revenue, and subtract our cost of goods sold to come down to our gross profit. Well, we can see our sales revenue from two sales. Our first sale, we had revenue of $450, 15 units sold at $30 each. Our second sale had sales revenue of $600, 20 units for a sales price of $30 each, total sales revenue $1,050. We already calculated our cost of goods sold, $440, 180 plus 260 in the cost of sale column, and we can now calculate our gross profit, which is our sales revenue minus our cost of goods sold, 
$610. So from keeping our perpetual inventory records, you can see we were able to calculate our beginning inventory, purchases, cost of goods sold, ending inventory, and gross profit.